If your dog is an overexcited mess in the car, and I'm talking a real nutcase, won't stop howling and crying, then today's video is for you, coming up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go and subscribe first. give you all of the juicy tips that are going to solve all of your problems, I just want to take you on a little deep dive into your dog's brain. I want you to understand the psychology of why your dog is acting the way that he's acting. I really think that it's going to help you um, train this out of your dog a lot, lot faster. So in the 1890s, there was a scientist called Ivan Pavlov. He did an experiment where he, um, he proved that dogs could have an emotional response to something. He would make the sound of a bell and he would associate that sound with food. As a result, the dogs would salivate. So he learned that even if you took that food away, just with the sound of the bell, the dogs would salivate in the expectation of food. There's no thought process here, but it was just an emotional response to just one sound. Now, this is the exact same thing that you have with your dog. When you take your dog to the car, your dog is associating that car with the best walk ever. There is always something incredibly exciting for your dog as a payoff to the car. So that car is associated with something incredible and that is why you are getting that extreme excitement. There's no thought process there, it is literally just through association. So with that in mind, can you tell me, if you're looking back when you first got your dog, can you think what were your dog's first experiences in the car and does that explain why your dog is so excited to, to kind of get to the car now? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of the ladder of uncontrollable excitement. Said no one ever because I just made it up. <laughs> Let me explain. Imagine excitement as a ladder. At the very, very top of this ladder, you've got uncontrollable excitement. Now, uncontrollable excitement is really easy to see. It's very obvious. But what's not so obvious is all of the steps up that ladder that our dog has taken to reach uncontrollable excitement. Our job is to understand and break down all of these steps into as many small parts as we possibly can to help our dog or to prevent our dog from actually reaching the top of that ladder. So everybody's ladder is going to look a little bit different but I'm going to take you through just a typical ladder with some real common steps on there. So step number one is just going to be picking up the lead. Step number two is going to be picking up your keys. Step number three could just be popping your shoes on. Step number four would be just saying walkies or if you've got any word that means um, going out for a walk with your dog. Step number five would be just that front door, going through the front door. Step number six would be um, opening the boot for the car and closing the boot for the car. Um, step number seven would be turning that ignition on so now the dog's got that sound of the car. And step number eight would be the actual movement of the car going somewhere. All of these steps are connected to the best walk ever. So that means as soon as you pick up your keys, as soon as you pop your shoes on or open that front door, your dog is already climbing that ladder of excitement because these things are associated with the best walk ever. Now let's take a look at how we can reduce the excitement that our dogs have to each step. The lead. We need the lead to become a little bit more boring. Ways that you can do this is by getting the lead out a few times throughout the day and just letting the dog know that sometimes the lead doesn't mean a walk. Literally, grab the lead, pop it on the table, let the dog see that it's on the table and you do nothing. Pop the lead on the dog, don't go out for a walk, but maybe you do a small obedience session, something where the dog forgets completely about the lead, okay? Now, another thing that you can do is when you are actually going on the walk and it's for real this time, pop the lead on the dog and just take a minute, just wait. Instead of just bursting out of that door at 100 miles an hour, just make the dog sit, take a breath, and just share some calm energy with the dog before you even set off. Keys, we effectively need our keys to mean nothing. And this is super, super easy to do. You will literally just start moving your keys about and nothing good happens for the dog. It won't take long for your dog to get very bored of you moving those keys because it will just realize that it's kind of getting up all excited and all you've done is move your keys from here to there 
and that means nothing to your dog. The more you repeat that randomly, not too much, but randomly, your dog will soon understand that keys aren't always super exciting. Step three, popping your shoes on. Um, now this one can be a little bit more tricky. You need to plan a little bit ahead of this one, make sure that you've got some clean shoes because you can't just be traipsing through your house with dirty shoes on, obviously. But if you have some clean shoes that you can pop on, come into the house, again, just show the dog that nothing fun is immediately happening with those shoes. So pop the shoes on, mill about the house for a bit, maybe go in the garden, do something that is not extremely exciting for the dog straight away. Step number four on our ladder is walkies. If you are one of those owners, one of those people that tell your dog that they're about to go on walkies, then you need to stop right now because that is just gonna take them straight to the top of the ladder because you are literally telling them they are about to do what they are hoping <laughs> we're about to do. So if you use a phrase, just get rid of it right now. Step number five is the front door. Our overall goal on this step is to get through that front door with a dog in a calm state of mind that is receptive to what we're saying, that is ready to listen, okay? So for that reason, this step is all about obedience. We're gonna start off with the dog in a sit, we're gonna ask for eye contact, and then we're gonna ask our dogs to heal. Our goal is to get out of that front door calmly. It doesn't matter if we need to go back and forth 10 times because our dog's getting excited going through that front door. We go, we, we literally repeat this step as many times as we need to do to get out with our dogs still being calm, offering us eye contact, and with a loose lead. Step number six is the boot. Now this is so similar to uh, step number five, which was the front door. It's all about obedience. We need our dog to be waiting in a sit, calmly offering us eye contact while we open the boot and before we allow the dog to jump up into the boot. This is just about obedience. If we can use obedience to keep the level of energy of our dogs down, then we're gonna have a much calmer dog in the car. Step number seven is the ignition. I want you to turn that ignition on and I want you to go back into the house or just sit in the car on your phone, but do something for five minutes. Don't set straight off. So you might need to plan your journey. You might need to wake up five minutes earlier, but I want the dog to understand that the car goes on and nothing actually happens immediately. So he's got no reason to be excited when he gets into the car because he just waits for five minutes and he goes and lies down. Step number eight is movement. Now this is a really tricky step to uh, fix because it's usually followed by the payoff which is the best walk ever. Now we need to try and, and, change, and change that outcome. We need to try and plan some journeys where we don't actually need to go anywhere so the dog can understand that sometimes he gets in the car, we go for a half an hour drive and then we come back and nothing has happened. If you can do this three or four times in a week, then your dog will learn super fast that going into the car and driving doesn't always result in the best walk ever. And it does become a lot more boring really fast. So now that we've gone through all of my steps, I want you to take a real good look at your own ladder. And I want you to come up with a plan of attack of how you are going to make all of these little steps for your dog a little bit more boring. If you've got any good ideas, please let me know in the comments below. So now you understand why your dog is getting so excited and you know how to desensitize all of these little steps on your ladder of uncontrollable excitement. Let's jump into my game-changing tips that are going to help <laughs> Tip one, drain your dog's energy. A tired dog is a good dog. Take your dog out into the garden, play fetch for 10 minutes. Just get that burst of initial energy out of the dog. Do 10 minutes of obedience. Do something that's gonna drain your dog's energy. Tip two, prepare a Kong. Put some chicken, some peanut butter into a Kong, pop that into the freezer um, so that your dog doesn't just go through it in two seconds and pop that in the car. Give your dog something else to do, something super distracting um, that is just gonna completely avoid the excitement in the first place. Tip three is make the car super cozy. Give them a place where they can go and settle down. Put a nice bed in there, a nice blanket, somewhere so they can actually go lie down, have their Kong and just relax. Tip number four is be patient, you are in no rush. Waiting for 10 to 30 seconds at key points is really, really gonna help you. For example, don't let the dog burst straight out that front door. Just wait for 10 seconds for the dog to calm down. The same goes for when you open that car boot. The same goes for when you're at your walk and you open that car boot. Don't let the dog just crash out of the car straight away being super excited. 
make the dog wait. Give the dog 10 to 30 seconds just to Tip number five is regular trips without a payoff. The reason that your dog is super, super excited and crazy in the car is because there's always a payoff. It has the best walk ever. So now we need to do trips in the car where there's no payoff. So see if you can find some journeys that you can do and take your dog with you that don't have that payoff. Things like going to your parents' house, quickly popping in, grabbing something, getting back in the car and going, and, and going back to your house. There's no payoff there for the dog, hasn't even got out of the car. See if you can find different types of journeys that you can take your dog um, that you can take your dog with you on, that you can take your dog on with you, that you can take, that you can take your dog with you on. Yeah, I don't know. I think we should start like it. Just take your dog with you. <laughs> my final tip, and I want to just include a real short story um, about my first dog, Alfie, my pride and joy, the reason I'm a dog trainer. I would argue the best dog that's ever walked the face of the earth, Alfie. Um, but he was a nightmare in the car. He was really, really terrible. And one of the things I started doing, which it, it probably made the biggest difference out of every tip that I tried, this was probably the, the kind of one that had the biggest payoff. Um, I started taking him on drives for no reason. So we, we would literally just drive and sing. And I love singing, so it was quite easy for me to just jump into the car and go for half an hour just singing a bit of Ed Sheeran. Like, I absolutely loved it. But my dog, Alfie, started to get the association with the car that we were just going for a drive and a sing, which was quite calming. He would just go to sleep. So just changing the type of journey that we were going on and making regular times where we were specifically kind of getting into the car going for a drive and just having a sing, it had a ripple effect on all of the other drives because his expectation was now different just because of the journeys that we started to do. So when I say that you need to go on a journey and you need to sing, that's not optional. You go on a journey and you sing. So there you have it guys, that is how you calm down a crazy nutcase in the car. Just remember that this is a process. This does take a little bit of time. Remember right at the beginning of this video, we talked about this being an emotional response from your dog. So we need to change a whole emotion in your dog to how they respond to the car. This does take time, have patience, be consistent. You will get there. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, that comment button, any other buttons. Share this video, that's a new one. I never say that one. See ya. take we're going to do with this. Nah. You're sort of looking up like that. <laughs> <clears throat> now, <laughs> our job is to really address, notice and start again. Whenever you're ready. All of these steps are connected. <laughs> In a great circle of life. <laughs> Excitement for all of these smaller steps and disconnect them from the best walk ever. With excitement. So, fucking fuck. Got that on camera. Best walk ever.